Hello everyone, welcome to the next module. So in this module we're going to talk about ionic equilibria in aqueous systems. So let's get into the lecture. So in this lecture we're going to discuss equilibria of acid base buffers, acid base titration curves, equilibria of slightly soluble ionic compounds and equilibria involving complex ions. So let's start with the understanding of a buffer commonly known as an acid base buffer. So an acid base buffer is a solution that lessens the impact of pH from the addition of an acid or a base. So think of buffers as uh, you know relieving compounds. So these are compounds that are generally used to lessen the impact of the pH when you add acid or a base into an acid or a base. Now an acid base buffer usually consists of a conjugate acid base pair where both species are present in appreciable quantities in the solution. Now an acid base buffer is generally a solution of a weak acid and its conjugate base or a weak base and its conjugate acid. So remember this point, this is important. Generally acid base buffers are always a solution of weak acid and its conjugate base or a weak base and its conjugate acid. So let's take an example of an unbuffered solution and a buffered solution. So let's look at an example of an unbuffered solution. So let's say we have a 100 ml sample of dilute HCl and we have adjusted its pH to a value of 5. Now when you add just 1 ml of strong acid, that particular pH reduces to 2 and when you add 1 ml of NaOH, that value increases to 12. Notice that just 1 ml can cause drastic changes in the value of the pH based on the amount of solution that you started with. Now let's say we have a solution of 100 ml of a sample of an acidate buffer that's adjusted to a pH of 5. Now remember here this is a buffer solution which means now when you add 1 ml of a strong acid that value does not change appreciably it only changes really small and the same thing happens with uh, when you add a base that base will not affect the actual pH that much. So this here the acidate buffer here is generally made by mixing 1 m acetic acid with 1 m sodium acetate which is the conjugate base of the acetic acid. So how do buffers work? So generally buffers work using the common ion effect. So let's take an example of that. So let's say we have acetic acid in water. And generally we know that acetic acid as a weak base dissociates only slightly to produce some acetate ion. So we have acetic acid mixed with water. So it reduces it to acetate ion. Now you also get H3O plus but notice that the weaker side is still going to be the side that has the acetic acid so which means that the equilibrium is pointed towards the left now if the sodium acetate is added what will happen here is that it will provide a shift source of it provides a source of this acetate ion so which means that the equilibrium will start now shifting to the left so which means that this CH3COO minus is common to both solutions so once we add more of this when we increase this we are basically pushing the equilibrium to increase the amount of acetic acid so thereby creating the common effect that's the term common ion effect because you have two common ions in the solution which which uh, you know effectively increases the actual amount of the ion results in the equilibrium to shift back into its original state so this here is the example of common ion effect now the addition of ch3co minus reduces the amount of dissociation of the acid so this here is the common ion effect so let's say we have initially 0.10 m concentration of acetic acid and we have and we haven't added any acetate ion yet the percentage of dissociation is about 1.3 percent now let's say if you add 0.05 m acetate acetate ion you start noticing that the percentage dissociation starts to decrease rapidly as the value starts increasing as the amount of acetate ion increases there is uh, minimal dissociation and you also notice that the pH initially is gonna be very low but as you add more and more acetate buffer you start noticing that the pH is really close to each other so this is the idea behind a buffer now how does a buffer work so a buffer generally contains components you have two components HA and A minus and they are able to shift the small amounts of added OH- or H3O plus by a shift in the equilibrium position. So what happens, let's say when you add acid, you are increasing the amount of H3O plus which results in increasing the, which results in the shifting the equilibrium to the left. 
Now, when you add OH minus, it causes the equilibrium sh to shift to the right because notice here that you start noticing that the acid start to react with the added OH minus ions, which which reacts with the causing a shift to the towards the right. Now, because there is common effect on both sides, so the slight the change is only really slightly and it does not affect the pH too much. The shift in the equilibrium position absorbs the change in H3O plus or OH minus, therefore not changing the pH very much and only a really slightly amount, slight amount. So what happens here when you add H3O plus there is an increase in the acid amount and a decrease in the CH3CO minus acetate ion. Now when you add OH minus there is a decrease in the acid and increase in the acetate ion but only a slight amount because the amount actually amount actually does not change much. So this is the idea behind this is the idea behind the working of a buffer. So the idea here is to remember that buffer generally has equal concentrations of A minus and HA. So we are starting with equal concentrations of the uh, buffer solution and when you add a certain amount of quantities that particular compound reacts with the opposite ion. So the positive ion reacts with the negative ion and the negative ion reacts with the positive ion. So they are the neutral ion resulting, resulting in the formation of these compounds. So let us look at relative concentrations. So let us say we have the solution of acetic acid. So we have CH3COOH reacting with H2O to form CH3CO minus plus H3O plus. Now what does Ka here represent? Ka value becomes the concentration of CH3CO minus the product concentration and you have H3O plus over CH3COOH. Now from this let us say if I want to find the actual concentration of H3O plus that value becomes Ka times the concentration of CH3COOH over the concentration of CH3CO minus. So this here is basically the representation of acid concentration by the base concentration. So which means that if this concentration of the acid over the ion if that increases so if the ratio increases so if this ratio increases we note that the H3O plus concentration will increase and also the same way if this concentration generally decreases the H3O plus decreases. Now we know that H3O plus is the main quantity that affects the pH so that generally affects the pH value so which means that because this is going to increase the pH value will decrease if this is going to decrease the pH value will increase. So this is the idea behind the understanding of how the ratio of the buffer components so the ratio of the buffer components affects the H3O plus of the solution. So let us calculate the problem so let us solve a problem using this principle now. So we have calculated the pH of a buffer solution consisting of 0.50 m CH3COOH and 0.50 m CH3COONA and B they are asking you to add 0 0.020 mole of solid NaOH to 1 liter of buffer solution in A and second they are also asking you to add 0 0.020 mole of HCl to 1 liter of buffer solution and they have given us the Ka for CH3COOH. So let us start with the idea right here. So first we are trying to create a buffer solution that buffer solution contains 0.50 m CH3COOH and we have 0.50 m CH3COO minus. Now how do you start the problem? Always remember that the idea here is to always start with the reaction table. So we have CH3COOH plus H2O giving CH3CO minus plus H3O plus. So we have initial the change and the equilibrium. 
So we are starting with a concentration of CH3CO OH which is 0 0.50 and the same concentration for CH3CO of minus. So notice that here this states dash and this initially is going to be 0. Now there is going to be a slight change in CH3COOH which means that this undergoes a negative change. So which means this undergoes a positive change and H3O plus undergoes the same positive change of plus X. Now in equilibrium, so CH3COOH is 0 0.50 minus X. This is going to be 0 0.50 plus X and plus X. Now the idea here is to remember K value right here. So the K value given in the problem for CH3COOH is 1.8 times 10 to the power negative 5 which is much much less than 1 so which means that this is going to be a really weak acid so which means that the amount of dissociation is nearly the same so which means that this value is nearly equal to 0 0.5 and this value is also nearly equal to 0 0.5 so now write down the formula for Ka so Ka becomes CH3 CO minus concentration of CH3CO minus times concentration of H3O plus over the concentration of CH3COOH. So, which is going to be 1.8 times 10 to the power negative 5 equals 0 0.50 times EX over 0 0.50. So, this EX value right here becomes 1.8 times 10 to the power negative 5. So we know that x also equals H3O plus. So the H3O plus concentration is 1.8 times 10 to the power negative 5. So to calculate pH, so we know that the value is negative log of H3O plus. So which becomes negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the power negative 5. So that pH value becomes so use a calculator that gives you a value of 4.74. So this is the pH of 0.50m acetic acid and acetate buffer. So the solution combined. So now next what we are trying to add next here is we are adding OH minus. So in the problem B. So this is problem A where we have found the buffer solutions pH. Next let's take up problem B. So in the problem B we are adding solid NaOH of 0 0.020 mole to 1 liter of a buffer solution. So we are adding, so we are adding NaOH which basically means that we are adding OH minus. So we have to find the concentration of this. So concentration is number of moles by the volume. So the number of moles here is 0 0.020 mole to a 1 liter of a buffer solution. So which means this becomes 0 0.002 yum. So we found the concentration of water. So now we get two reactions. Notice that this OH- reacts with the acid. So which means we have a reaction CH3COOH plus OH-, so which reacts and forms CH3COO- plus H2. So this is the first reaction. Now let's look at the concentrations and figure out how much will be the initial concentration when we start the actual reaction. So we have the initial change and at equilibrium. So this concentration originally is 0 0.50 and the OH- minus we have added is 0 0.02. So and this becomes, this is originally again is 0 0.50 and the H2O is nil so we don't need to calculate that value. Now the change here depends upon how much of the acid will react. Notice that one mole of this acid will react with one mole of OH minus which means both of them will react the same. So the change here is going to be minus 0 0.02 and this is going to completely react with the acid. So this is going to be negative 0 0.02 and this here notice that here the product is this one so which will increase so which makes this become plus 0 0.02. So this value becomes 0 0.48 this will become 0 this will become 0 0.5. Now this is the reaction that starts before the even the actual reaction starts. So let's look at the now the actual reaction. So the actual reaction here is CH3COOH plus H2O becomes CH3CO minus plus H3O plus. 
So this is the actual reaction of the acid dissociation. Now in this actual reaction, let's look back at initial change and equilibrium. Now notice here that there is an ink change in the concentrations now. Here, the initial, this equilibrium concentration becomes the initial concentration in the second reaction. So, which means CH3COOH would have been 0 0.48. Notice that this acid has been utilized by OH minus, and this has been increased due to the OH minus concentration. So, again, dash, this becomes 0. Now, the change here is going to be again negative x. So, this means this will become plus x and plus x. So, how do you calculate this again? 0 0.48 minus x. 0 0.52 plus x and plus x. So we know that Ka value is 1.8 times 10 to the power negative 5 which is much less than 1 so which means that this is a really weak acid. So the approximations can be justified so which means that this value 0 0.48 minus x which is the concentration of CH3COOH can be approximated to 0 0.48 m. The same thing with CH3COO minus concentration which can be approximated to 0.52 and we have the H3O plus concentration which is going to be X. So now I to write down the formula for Ka. So the Ka formula becomes CH3CO minus times H3O plus over CH3COOH. So which value becomes 1.8 times 10 to the power negative 5 equals 0 0.48 times sorry 0 0.52 times ex over 0 0.48 so ex value becomes 1.8 times 10 to the power negative 5 times 0 0.48 over 0 0.5 So x value becomes 1.7 times 10 to the power negative 5. So we know that x value is H3O plus. So the H3O plus concentration is 1.7 times 10 to the power negative 5. M. Yeah. And we have to calculate the pH. So pH is negative log of H3O plus. So which is going to be negative log of 1.7 times 10 to the negative 5. So which becomes 4.77. So which is the pH of the buffered solution with uh, NaOH of so with 0 0.020 mole NaOH. So notice that there is a slight change in the pH. The initial pH was 4.74 because we have added OH minus the change in the pH is slight. Now in the second part of the question, the last C part of the question, they said that they are adding 0 0.020 mole of HCl to 1 liter of the buffer solution. So HCl here is basically creating H3O plus when it forms in water. So it creates H3O plus. So H3O plus reacts with CH3COO minus to form CH3COOH plus H2. Now the initial amount of H3O plus that's being added equals the concentration of HCl. So initial change and equilibrium. So initially you have 0 0.020 mole of HCl in about 1 liter of a solution. So the amount of H3O plus here added, so, so the amount of H3O plus added becomes the number of moles by volume, so 0 0.020 by 1 liter, so it becomes 0 0.02 m. And the amount of CH3COOH originally present is 0 0.50 and the amount of CH3COOH present is 0 0.50 and this is dash. Now notice that the acid is completely utilized so which means it becomes negative 0 0.02 and completely reacts with CH3COO minus resulting in negative 0 0.02 again. So which means it creates the acid extra which is going to be plus 0 0.02 and dash. So you get 0, 0 0.48, 0 0.52 dash. So this becomes, this equilibrium concentrations right here becomes the initial concentrations for the next reaction 
So the next reaction is going to be CH3COOH plus H2O forms CH3CO minus plus H3O plus. So again, we have initial change equilibrium. So the initial value of CH3COOH that is present here is 0.52 dash and this is 0.48 and this becomes 0. So the change is going to be negative x plus x and plus x. So this value becomes 0.52 minus x, 0.48 plus x and plus x. So from this table, we can write that the concentration of CH3COOH is 0.52 minus x so which is nearly equal to 0.52 because the k value is really less than really small so which means that it's a really weak acid now we have the concentration of ch3co minus which is going to be 0.48 plus x so which is nearly equal to 0.48 what is the difference here before ch3coh was 0.48 and ch3co minus was 0.52 now CH3COOH is 0.52 and CH3CO minus is 0.48 and the amount of H3O plus present is equal to X. Now write down the formula for Ka. So the Ka formula is CH3CO minus times H3O plus over CH3COOH. So CH3CO minus is 0.48 times X over 0.52. So the k value is 1.8 times 10 to the power negative 5. So the x value becomes 1.8 times 10 to the power negative 5 times 0.52 over 0.48. So let's calculate the x value. So that x value here becomes 2.0 times 10 to the power negative 5m. So which is also equal to the H3O plus concentration which is 2.0 times 10 to the power negative 5 gram but we need the pH value which is negative log of H3O plus so which becomes 2.0 times 10 to the power negative 5 so which when calculated gives you a value of 4.70 so this is your answer notice that here because we have added the acid the pH is reduced before we added a base so the pH has increased so that's how you know your answers are in the headed in the right direction. So when you add a strong acid, you are basically completing the reaction of a strong acid and the base component of the buffer, thereby increasing the acid concentration and decreasing the base concentration, resulting in a final buffer ratio where the acid base ratio is greater than x and the pH is going to be less than the original value. Now, so it is going to be greater than the initial buffer. So, so when you add a strong base, you are decreasing the acid concentration and increasing the base concentration. So which means that the final buffer ratio is going to be less than the initial buffer ratio and the pH will be greater than the actual original value of the pH. So to make this simpler, we use what we call the henderson Hasselbalch equation. So how does that work? So let's take an acid which is going to be a so when you have an acid, an aqueous acid, and when you mix it in water, which is liquid, it results in the formation of A minus, which is aqueous, and H3O plus, which is also going to be aqueous. Now we know the formula for Ka here, it can be written as concentration of A minus times the concentration of H3O plus over the concentration of H. Now when you calculate the concentration of H3O plus, that becomes Ka times the concentration of HA over A minus. Now when you put negative log for everything, so when you put negative log of H3O plus becomes negative log of Ka times HA over A minus. Now we know that when you multiply under log we can split it into addition. So negative log of H3O plus can be written as negative log of Ka plus so plus and minus becomes minus negative log of HA by A minus. 
So you know the formula for negative log of HDO plus and negative log of KA. So which becomes pH equal to pKa minus log of HA by A minus or it can also be written in this way where pH can be written as pKa plus log of A minus by HA. So both are both of them are correct and you can use any one of them to calculate the pH of a buffer solution where we add a slight amount of acid or a base. So this is the idea behind uh, the henderson Hasselbach equation. So to simplify this we can write it as pH equals pKa minus the log of the acid concentration by the base concentration or we can write pH equals pKa plus the log of base concentration by the acid concentration. So both of these formulas are valid. Next let's talk about buffer capacity. So the buffer capacity is the measure of the strength of the buffer. So what does the buffer do? It basically maintains the pH. So which means buffer capacity uh, judges its ability of maintaining the pH whenever you add a strong acid or strong base. Now the greater the concentrations of the buffer components the greater its capacity to resist its pH changes. So the closer the component concentrations are each to each other, the greater the buffer capacity. So let's take an example between buffer capacity and pH change. So let's say we have an initial buffer, initial uh, capacity of 4.74. When you add a really strong acid that has a pH of, when you add a really, really strong acid. So when the strong base is added, the pH increases at least increases the least for the most concentrated buffer. The more dilute the buffer, the more the pH change. The more concentrated the uh, the more concentrated the base, the lesser the lesser the increase in the pH value. The same thing happens with the acids as well. So let's talk about buffer range. So buffer range is the pH range over which a buffer is effective. So buffer range is related to the ratio of the buffer concentrations. So the closer this ratio is to 1, so which is the acid by base concentration, the more effective the buffer. Now if the concentration of one component is more than 10 times the concentration of the other, the buffering action is going to be poor since log 10 equals 1. So buffers have a usable range within plus or minus 1 pH unit of the pKa of the acid component. So let's take an example right here. So the molecule scenes represent the samples of 4 HA A minus buffer. HA represents blue and green. A minus is green and other ions and water are not shown. So let's take the one. So which buffer has the highest amount of pH? So the ones that have the highest amount of pH, how do you know the ones that have the highest amount of pH? So those are the ones that have the highest amount of acid in it. So let's take each and every one of them and let's calculate by HA by A minus. So in the first one, we have three acid molecules and three base molecules. In the second one, we have four acid molecules and two base molecules. And in the third one, we have four acid molecules and four base molecules. And in the last one, we have two acid molecules and four base molecules. So which one will have the highest amount of pH? So the one that has the highest amount of pH, notice that here, pH here represents the value so we know that pH formula here equals pKa minus log of HA by A minus or we can write A minus by so let us make it simpler so let us use pH formula which is equal to pKa plus log of base by acid so let us look at the base by acid ratios for each of them. So the base by acid ratio is A minus by A, HA, so which is going to be 4 by 4 here, sorry, 3 by 3 here. So here it is going to be 2 by 4, here it is going to be 4 by 4, and the last one it is going to be 4 by 2. Now which one has the highest base to the acid ratio? So the one that has the highest amount of base to the acid ratio is the fourth one. 
which is going to be 2 so which means the fourth one will have the highest amount of pH because this value will be higher so the answer for A is 4 next which buffer has the greatest capacity so the buffer that has the greatest capacity is the one that has the most amount of acid base molecules with a ratio of a with a ratio of equal to 1 so here we have 1 and 3 having the same ratio but the third molecule has more acid and base molecules so which means this one will have the highest capacity so the answer here is 3 now should we add a small amount of concentrated strong acid or strong base to convert sample 1 to sample 2 assuming no changes so assuming no change so in the first one notice here that you have 1 and 2 they are converting 1 to 2 so which means that they are trying to convert an acid molecule into a base molecule so there are three acid molecules in the first one and there are going to be four more four acid molecules in the second one so we are basically converting one one base molecule into an acid molecule so to convert a base into an acid molecule we're going to have to add a concentrated strong acid so because we are converting a base to an acid so it means that here we are trying to uh, we're going to have to add a concentrated strong acid so when you convert base to an acid we need a strong acid when you convert uh, acid to a base we need a concentrated strong base so this is how we can calculate the values so how do you prepare a buffer so how do you prepare a buffer first you start choosing the conjugate acid base pair now always use try to remember that the pKa of the weak acid component should be close to the desired pH only then will the particular prepared buffer will be uh, really good next we have to calculate the ratio of the buffer component concentrations that are required using the formula the Henderson Hasselbalch equation from this you can calculate the base to the acid ratio and start working out the concentrations next determine the buffer concentration and calculate the required volume of the stock solutions that might be required and or mass of the components next finally mix the solution and correct the pH value so let's start by let's start with this problem so you have an environmental chemist needs a carbonate buffer of a pH of 10 to study the effects of acid rain on limestone rich soils how many grams of sodium carbonate must she add to 1.5 liter freshly prepared 0.220 m NaHCO3 to make the buffer so the Ka here is 4.7 times 10 to the power negative 11. So now let's start with the idea here of the actual concentration part. So the conjugate pay here is H3, H3, HCO3 minus which is the acid and CO3 2 minus which is going to be the base. So the HCO3 minus which is the acid reacts with water and create CO3 2 minus plus as 3 plus so in the problem they have given that they have to they need a carbonate buffer of pH 10 so the pH value is equal to 10 so we know that pH is equal to negative log of H3O plus which is going to be 10 so we need the H3O plus concentration so which is going to be 10 to the power negative 10 so which gives you a value of 1 point so the H3O plus concentration is 1 times 10 to the power negative 10 m. Yeah. So the first we have to calculate if we have calculated the H3O plus concentration that we might require. The second thing is to remember the Ka value that is given here. So the Ka value is HCO3 is 4.7 times 10 to the power negative 11. So this is the Ka value that is given right here. Now we have to find the CO3 2 minus concentration that is going to create the actual amount. So from the Ka formula, so let's write down the Ka formula first from the from this equation right here. We have CO3 2 minus times H3O plus over the concentration of HCO3 minus. So from this, if you write down CO3 2 minus concentration, that gives you a value of Ka times HCO3 minus over H3O plus so the concentration of CO3 2 minus becomes K 
ka which is 4.7 times 10 to the power negative 11 times the hco3 minus concentration so which is the concentration equal to that of the sodium bicarbonate which is 0 0.20 m so 0 0.20 divided by the h3o plus concentration which is 1 times 10 to the power negative 10 so which equals 0 0.094 m yeah. So this is the concentration of CO3 minus. So now they are asking that we need to know the actual amount of Na3, Na2CO3 for 1.5 liter of freshly prepared buffer. So the amount of CO3 minus, which is the number of moles, N, is going to be the molarity times volume. So the molarity is 0 0.094 times the volume is going to be 1.5 liter. So calculated, the value gives you 0 0.14 mole of CO3 2 minus. Now, how do you calculate the actual grams NaCO3, Na2CO3? So that value becomes, now remember that the number of moles is mass by molar mass. We need to calculate the mass here. So the mass becomes number of moles times the molar mass. So the number of moles here is 0 0.14 times the molar mass. So which when calculated gives you a value of 105.99. So finally that value gives you a value of 15 grams of Na2CO3. So this is the amount of Na2CO3 required to create a buffer of pH 10. Now let's get into acid base indicators. So what is an acid base indicator? So an acid base indicator is a weak organic acid whose color differs from that of its conjugate base. So we have the indicator acid and the indicator minus conjugate base. Now the ratio of this H indicator acid by the indicator minus is governed by the H3O plus of the solution and indicators therefore are generally used to monitor the pH change during the acid base reaction. Now the color of an indicator always changes over a specific narrow pH range generally about 2 pH units. So these are the common uh, acid base indicators. Crystal violet which act, uh, acts um, under a range of 0 to 1.9. Uh, thymol blue which acts about 1.5 to 3, 1 to 3. You have 2, 4 dinitrophenol which acts about 2.5 to 4. Uh, bromophenol blue which is generally used to uh, calculate for 3 to 4.5. You have bromocresol green which again is about 3.7 to 5. You have methyl red which works from around 4.5 to 6. So this way we have multiple indicators, acid base indicators which work over a narrow ranges. These are generally used to calculate the pH change. So they are generally used to monitor the pH change happening inside an acid base reaction. So this is the acid base indicator of bromthymol blue. So which indicates the which indicates yellow when the pH is less than 6. It indicates a transparent uh, brownish color when it's 6 to 6, 7.5 and blue when it pH is 7 greater than 7.5. So this is the idea behind acid base.